What's up everybody? Today is gonna to be all about building a budget PC, uh, comparing new versus used. So let me show you what I've got going on here. So this is something I actually put together for my little boy Tor Torsten. Uh, it's his first uh, like serious uh, gaming PC, I guess, uh, as far as what we were able to put together with the budget. And it is a used workstation that I upgraded to be able to play his games. It has a uh, Xeon series chip in it, which is an E5 six core, 12 thread CPU. It does uh, really, really well. People don't think about these things. They're built like absolute tanks. Um, they're real easy to work on, they're toolless. You just grab the side panel, it comes off. Uh, extremely expandable and very, very quiet. But uh, I guess the most important thing is how much all this costs. So one of the places you can check things out is this site that's real famous called PC Park Picker. And they have uh, basically different pre-organized uh, builds that are for different classes and different budgets. Like you can see they've got stuff, you know, from the thousand dollar range way on up and their cheapest build and these are automatically filled in and updated with the current best prices they can find is five hundred and eleven dollars and seventy nine cents and it's slightly dis disingenuous because they don't list an operating system on it so it's something to keep in mind because if you want you know an activated copy of windows you've either got a you purchase a license from somewhere or you've got to have the, the license key to activate it or you can just ignore it and have the little <laughs> please activate windows thing sitting in the corner forever but that's kind of an irritation anyhow let's look at what they've got for their ultimate budget build and you can see that it's uh intel i3 9100 if we go down here to the bottom it's a little easier to look at which is a quad core cpu uh, it's basically current gen. I mean, there's another i3 after this one, but it, it's it's okay. Uh, the F means it doesn't have the onboard video, and then it has the cheapest motherboard they could find, uh, 16 gigs of uh, relatively low end uh, DDR4 RAM, the 2666 speed, some solid state drive from a company I've never heard of, TC Sunbow. I guess it's some mysterious Chinese brand. Then a four gig Radeon 570 graphics card, which is not too bad. They've got that at $130. And a case, a Cougar MX330. I've never used that case before. I can't imagine it'd be either too good or too bad. It's probably all right. And then a pretty decent power supply. It's a Cooler Master 550 watt bronze. But like I said, that total uh, comes out to 511.79. So if you go to eBay, these things are sold all the time. This one was sold for $152. And so it's got the CPU, the motherboard, the case, a Windows license, RAM, and then it will have an existing hard drive and video card that you can kind of ignore, like keep the video card as a spare. And then you can put the hard drive in as a secondary. And I'll go over that in a future video, like how to take one of these from this state and just add some parts, load windows, and you're good to go. And these virtually always have a uh, Windows 7 professional license. The sticker will be on the back. And you can use that license code. It will activate Windows 10 Pro through the digital uh, rights management system. Uh, it checks and just activates. That's what I did for this one, which gives us the um, Windows 10 Pro. And Torsten's actually came with 32 gigs of RAM. And even though it's DDR3, this platform, this Socket 2011, has quad channel RAM. So it's got eight RAM slots, and he's got four sticks of eight gig right now. But this uh, platform supports 256 gigs of RAM, uh, which is 
kind of crazy. I mean, I doubt anybody will ever need to use one of those with, you know, 256 gigs, but it's also really cheap to RAM to purchase. So it gives you a little bit extra there. The one thing I wish the system had was uh, M.2 ports on it, but it doesn't. That's the new card style SSD. But for gaming, games load the same whether you've got a um, regular SATA SSD or a real fast NVMe. It's just the way they work on PC. There's uh, videos from Linus Tech Tips and a few other people have compared it and the loading times are either the same or sometimes slightly worse with an NVMe versus a SATA SSD. Now, if you're doing a lot of professional work, a lot of compression, decompression, that's where the NVMe SSDs are faster. Um, but you do have a front and rear USB 3.0. It's got a ton of USB ports and it has three uh, full length PCI Express X16 slots. Um, these things have 40 PCI Express lanes versus 16 for the consumer platforms. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Anyhow, let me take a peek. Now, for Torstens, I put a radio, not a radio, a uh, NVIDIA GTX 970. It was one of my cards I had before. And it worked totally fine with the power supply that, that it came with. It's a 610 watt power supply that is in here. And if we look at the price difference for building a used system versus a new system and what it would end up being so this direction you get a six core 12 thread um, unless you go with the 1620 i put the, the three different models of xeon to work with all three of those models the 1620 the 1650 and the 1660 are all good gaming cpus the 1620 is a quad core just like this i3 but the um, the 50 and the 60 are probably the sweet spot they are six core chips that still have pretty fast clock speeds, uh, relatively speaking. If you go with uh, some of the higher models that sound like they'd be better, they all actually have eight, 10, 12 cores or more, but the cores, each core will be clocked slower. And the 50 and the 60 are actually unlocked. I've got the uh, Intel XTU program on this system and I'm running this one at slightly faster than stock speeds, which is something that I could show you in the future. I actually clicked on the wrong thing. Let me bring up the XTU. <clears throat> and uh, it runs fantastic. He, uh, he really likes it, plays all his games. And as far as the range of games, like even like recent stuff like Metro and Control work fine. And it's just having a hard time focusing. So this is running at six cores of 40X. So that's four gigahertz across all six cores, which is uh, it's pretty decent. Uh, because, of course, the BIOS doesn't want you to overclock on this thing. But the um, Intel XTU will let you overclock. And, of course, you know, it runs extremely cool. Um, I put a little extra fan in the case. But, um, yeah, it's really nice. So if I go to stress test and CPU stress test, start testing we can actually watch it ramp up so it's sitting there at four gigahertz and it'll sit right around uh, mid to mid 60s to low 70s and I've got the power limit unlocked so it'll just sit there right at four gigahertz just completely flat stable it doesn't throttle or anything so pretty nice all right, <clears throat> to recap what, what we got over here, if you buy the system online, you get basically the CPU with the heatsink fan, the case, of course, uh, motherboard in there. You get, make sure you look for one of 16 to 32 gigs of RAM, a really nice power supply, and you got the Windows license. So all you really need to do is add a video card and a solid state. So building one out like that, 465 total, uh, that's shipped. The um, video card and the solid state there are both from Amazon. And over here on the new side, it's 512 without Windows for a system with a quad core with a um, Radeon 570 
versus the NVIDIA 1666 gigs. The, that NVIDIA 1660 is a bit better, a bit newer than this card. Um, it's a newer process, it, it runs a little cooler. Um, the current Radeon that would be comparable to that, I believe, is the uh, Radeon 5500. They're about 200 bucks. Um, they're available in four and, and eight gig variants. Uh, so it's sort of splitting the difference. I mean, either way, you know, you could put a Radeon 5500 in there, or if you had a little bit more budget, you could put in a Radeon 5600. You know, of course, an NVIDIA 1660 Super or TI. The more money you spend, the higher you can get. Now, for either one of these systems, it wouldn't make sense to put like a $500 graphics card in it. Um, but these mid-range cards are really good either for, you know, a new build or a used build. Um, but if you look at the price with Windows from, you know, buying from a legit source like Amazon, you can end up with $642 for, you know, the i3 with, uh, you know, the kind of mysterious solid state and a four gig Radeon 570. Just not the worst build out there by any means, but I think it's a worse value than this. Between these two systems, this one would play games much better. You know, just the video card alone, that six gig 1660 versus a four gig 570. You know, that's not a bad card at all. That card right there, that 570 four gig, is basically exactly the equal of the card that Torsten has in this machine, which right now is, like I said, it's an NVIDIA 970. And it's a, um, Pretty cool, you know, card. It's an older one. It runs just fine. I've got the old Intel Active Management technology turned off. This has a lot of server features you can kind of ignore. Um, but, you know, he's got a lot of different games installed here. And I'm going to let him um, review one for you here in a minute. Hold on a second. I'm going to load up or pick out something to load up. All right, so I fired up a big open world game, and this is um, 1440p. I think my, uh, my camera is not really capturing as smooth as it is. Uh, it's totally fluid. Um, you know, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Uh, I don't want to say Origins, which is the previous one. And um, yeah, I'd say I guess it's probably running on like 60, 80 frames per second. And you know, it's a, gi a giant open world game. You've got most of the settings at, at high. Um, making sure that I don't, you know, exceed the VRAM. And I just got a little wired Xbox controller for him. Kind of hard to play with one hand. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it runs really well. I need to do uh, something to get, get a better camera and some capture stuff so I can show how smooth this stuff runs. This is uh, you know, one of the more demanding AAA titles that there is, and it runs really nice and smooth. And you know, the system's quiet, it's not going haywire or anything. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what it's like. I guess I'll, uh, I'll show you what it looks like inside the, the system, and then uh, I'll let Torsten, he's excited to, to review this game, uh, Brick Rigs, for you. He might show you some Fortnite too. All right, be right back. Okay, so usually these come a little bit banged up. He's not really too worried about what it looks like. And they have some like Think Station logos and stickers and stuff I pull off the top. I just left that single <laughs> Xeon sticker there. So you just squeeze and lift, get that out of the way. And you can see the uh, power supply there. That's um, the one that is pretty good. So I guess. Um, 600 watt. Some of these are 610s, I guess, but uh, yeah, it's an 80 plus gold. There's the uh, four there, four there. So eight sticks of quad channel RAM. I added a uh, extra fan to blow across the uh, CPU heatsink because I'm overclocking this for them a little bit up to the four gigahertz, which is not much, but a little bit. And there's the GTX uh, 970, and it's got the PCI Express connections in it, and then I added solid state, and then this is, a, I guess, a three terabyte 
standard hard drive. And then there's this big thing that lifts up here. That's the PCI Express slot. Um, I'm not sure what you call it. It's kind of a weird thing. Most systems that are regular, you just screw the cards in. This has this little thing. And it normally extends way down, but you can just snap it off so that it gives you room to use bigger video cards because the stock video cards are much smaller in these workstations. Uh, but it's a pretty easy system to work with. Like if you want to expand the CPU, it's just these four screws. This thing lifts right off. Um, it's actually an ATX motherboard as far as the layout, but the power, it's got this supplemental connection over there, which is a little bit different. So not the easiest thing to, um, you know, you just want to stick with the Lenovo power supply. And that has a ton of SATA connections. But there's six or more, no, seven, yeah. There's seven uh, hard drive connections. And then you, you do have a one regular PCI slot, but there's also one, two, three PCI Express slots right in a row. And then I've got his little Wi-Fi card there. Actually, this is the table that I work on PCs with. I got all kinds of parts and an airplane up there. Um, bins of memory and everything else. I actually use those uh, mailbox boxes because, or the post office uh, boxes because they're <clears throat> pretty good at holding stuff and they're free. <laughs> and I, I do ship some stuff. Oh, and it comes with a little you know, exhaust fan. It's a, just a real simple system to work with. And this handle... You can carry it around with this. It, it won't just fall off. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. All right, now I'm going to pause this and get him in here so he can play a game for y'all. In, in case they're downloading it tomorrow. Yeah. In case they're coming to and stuff. Yeah, you're on the video now. <laughs> so tell us, tell us about Brick Rigs. Okay. What kind of game is Brick Rigs? Right? And Does it have single player too? Yeah, so this is single player. You can't make your map multiplayer. You just have to press this. If, if that, that's no single. That's no multiplayer. Always oh, this is the multiplayer. But there's this section. So, yeah. It's just, yeah, I just did that. Uh, <laughs> okay. So I can, uh, oh, wait, wait, uh, oh yeah, we gotta figure that out. In this place, you own, in the garage, you can only can use the mouse. If you press this button, and if you press any, uh, and if you do that, if you press this button on your, uh, W? Yeah, and this, I mean, and you can look at, you can do that. So if you press on this, it goes in your thing. This makes the car just appear. This makes it that you can put a car inside of a, inside of a shot, or even there's maps on this game of plane and helicopter. So, yeah. So what are you going to load? So even there's this, which you can do that, and you only can use your mouse in these sec sections and your remote. Okay. Well, once so you get a vehicle. Yeah. You can do it on remote, but um, on some parts you can play the on computer or yeah. Well, grab the car or something. Yeah, that that's that's what only for in space. If you put on land on it, it just breaks automatically. All right. So I'm trying to find something. I'm something thing down here. Oh no, not not now. I I, I have this. Yeah, I got Fortnite stuff. Yeah, you must have a thousand things. Just pick a truck or something so you can, we can see what the game is. Yeah. I kind of 
trying to bring out something random with um, okay. your Minecraft bunny. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Somebody's in the Bible. Oh, <laughs> so you're driving the bunny? <laughs> 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 He's probably confused. <laughs> He's like, what is that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it's very, it's like in the other games where you drive the remote. This, yeah. which you have to hold this button. Right. And you can build whatever you want. Oh, like, well, like so if you got Lego instructions, you can actually build the whole thing. Yeah. So. Oh, you got somebody on top of you. Uh, your car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he says, can I have a car? Yeah, somebody's talking. <laughs> I think he's the first. I think he's one of the first players, right? I think he doesn't know how to play this game. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's how big the regular car is. Okay, he's going to get in that car. Yeah, so you spawned a car for him. That's pretty cool. Yeah, he can spawn cars too. And this game's real well optimized, so. Yeah. It's running at like a constant. Like 144 frames per second. It looks pretty nice though. It's got rain effects and everything. It's like the best Lego game that Lego never made. Yeah, you think you can have cars? I think this game is like 14.99 on Steam, and you can download other people's creations. There's tons and tons and tons of stuff: planes, trains, cars, buildings, Minecraft stuff. Just everything. What are you going to bring out? So, I kind of mean, even there's, oh yeah, I love the Forgotten Place. I didn't, I didn't use it. Um, I tried it in multiplayer, so, but they kicked me. Oh, oh, because that slows it down. That's millions of blocks. Huh? Yeah, I hope he doesn't lag, right? Yeah. Wow, it's like a skyscraper. <laughs> Oh, it's really tall. Yeah, I like the skyscraper. Very awesome. I think it's cool. Look at this. Look, this door is like broken. Oh, yeah. Because it's a little crooked. And there's these. This red stuff. I always use this color because it looks cool. Yeah. And you're in like the blank world, but there's actually like a metropolis that you could have been in. Yeah, you can spawn on um, any, you can, um, um, like, like, the limited bricks that you can only go, the limited bricks that you can put it to, which is 5,000, so, yeah. Oh, the, oh wait, what? <laughs> There's some tank in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you ever made this, I like it. Yeah, they did a good job. Yeah. It's huge. Yo, yeah, there's a broken window. <laughs> oh, that's definitely broken. <laughs> right. Yeah, and these are all Lego like pieces. If you had a tank, you could shoot the building and it would just start falling apart. Yeah. You can I can just so look. I can just show you how to make stuff in God mode. You do this, then this. Now look oh, at my health. I have infinite health. Uh, I didn't see what buttons you pressed. Do it again. It's this, then G. Oh, okay. That's how it... So All right, so I think that's enough for now. I'm going to come back later when you're playing Fortnite, okay? Okay. All right, Tarson, say bye to YouTube buddies. <laughs> you got to say bye. <laughs> Thanks for showing us Brick Rigs. Yeah, it's a pretty cool game. Was it one of your favorite games? Yeah. It's cool, huh? All right. Thank you. All right. So that was Torsten playing his 
Rick Riggs game and uh, budget PC overview. But if you got questions, let me know. I'm going to be doing more videos uh, showing the process, like if you got one of these, how to like make your USB stick, uh, set everything up and plug it, update it, and get the drivers in. There's tons of free games too if you know where to look for them. Like if you get the Epic client, they give you one or two games a week usually. So he's got a lot of that stuff that way. And then of course there's Steam sales and everything else. And I guess the next video to look forward to, I'm going to get him to play some NES with me and see how we do with that. All right. Love you guys. Take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye.